Jonathan, what do we have in the inbox today? Sure, let's take a look. Well, you know, here's a good one from another scientist who's struggling with some peptide and protein analyses. You know, they just kind of struggling because the typical additives that are used to do these types of analysis are either TFA or formic acid, mm -hmm. and both have warts. <laughs> TFA definitely suppresses the signal in the mass spec. Yep. And when using formic acid, you get poor peak shape. You know, is there anything that we can do to show that they can get acceptable peak shape and signal with a different maybe additive? Reading this email, you can tell this scientist is really frustrated. Yeah. And I can understand why. You know, sure. if you use UV and you use TFA, you get these nice sharp peaks and everything looks great. Perfect. But we know what that does to the mass spec signal. <laughs> so then you switch to formic acid and you get better signal, but your peaks are kind of broad. Maybe yep. you can't, don't get the sensitivity that you'd like yeah. to see because Hard of to that. Integrate. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's got to be another option, you know, that I think people could look look at. I, I can see why they'd be struggling. I mean, more modern column chemistries? Yeah. Maybe? Maybe. I mean, we've talked a little bit earlier about CSH, or charged surface chemistries, yeah. um, in an earlier episode. And those are really good um, when using formic acid. They do improve the peak shape, mm -hmm. but they might not give you the selectivity that you might be looking for. Right. So you might not be able to use a charged surface group. Mm -hmm. I know you read a lot of papers. I read a lot of papers. There's got to be some other solvents out there or other additives that we at least try to play around with to help this customer out. I think there could be. I think we should we should take on this challenge. Okay. Let's design an experiment where we look at maybe our mass prep standard peptide mixture just to, to make mix. it easy. Um, then we'll look at formic acid. Yeah. We'll look at TFA. Okay. Maybe one of those new modifiers that we've been reading about a little bit. Cool. We'll look at it with UV and with mass spec and just kind of see what the differences are and see if we can make any recommendations for this frustrated scientist. Yeah, and maybe we'll learn something ourselves. <laughs> we good. <laughs> All right. All right, let's take it. All right. So Kim, there's a lot of great papers out there that talk about these additives. And one of the ones that I really pulled out was difluoroacetic acid or oh, DFA. That's a new one. Yeah, I mean, we were able to run that in our experiments with the formic acid and the TFA, and it's got some really cool data, and I wanna show that now. Oh, let's take a look. So in this slide, it's really kind of straightforward. I mean, we're looking here at peak shape or asymmetry between TFA, formic acid, and DFA. And if you compare the peak symmetry um, for formic acid, it's pretty poor. You get a peak symmetry of 1.5, and we would expect that, because we know that it uh, doesn't produce sharp peaks. But when you compare the TFA and the DFA, they're pretty equivalent. The DFA is slightly better, but again, I'd say they're pretty comparable. So that's fairly promising. Yeah, you're right. In UV, TFA has been kind of the gold standard, but the DFA looks really good. Yeah, so let's take a look at it under the mass spec and some of the other conditions we tested it under. All right, JT, so now if we take a look and compare the mass spec signal of the formic acid, the DFA and the TFA, we can see that the TFA, as we would expect in the bottom chromatogram, um, with mass spec conditions, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, we've got a yeah. lot of suppression. And that's expected. Yep. If we look at the formic acid at the top, we see much better signal intensity. Again, expected. Mm -hmm. But the DFA there in the middle, it's looking pretty good. It's, it's looking great. Yeah, it's not quite as high as what we see with the formic acid, but it is really good. It's working much better than the TFA. Yeah, Kim, but we know DFA, they're not all created equal. No, and actually we took a look at difluoroacetic acid and we found that the crude material actually has a lot of different salts in it, which yeah. can really complicate the interpretation of our mass spec. But when we used a specially made LCMS purposed DFA that was purified, yep. we found we got much better results with much less salts. And that's why the LCMS grade DFA is really a necessity for this analysis. For sure, for sure. So Kim, let's put this in a real application with both MS and UV traces. How does that look? Yep, so here we're taking a look at an LCMS subunit profiling method. And okay. we're looking at ADC subunits. And we can see here, if we look at the left side of this, that with 0.1% TFA using 10% IPA at 80 degrees, mm -hmm. and we compare the MS and the UV, we can see that with mass spec, 
course, we've got TFA yep. in here. A lot of suppression. The signal is really suppressed, but it looks fantastic in UV. Good peak shape. And notice that we've noted the peak capacity here at 135 okay. for that separation. If we look at the right-hand side, we've used ion-enhanced DFA, which is a high-purity DFA, once yep. again. And we're able to eliminate the IPA out of this separation. We're using this at 70 degrees C. And you can see that that mass spec signal is much better. We have much wow. more um, sensitivity there. Yeah, a lot more peak capacity too. And if we look at the UV, the UV looks really good also. And the peak capacity is higher here. We're actually yeah. at a peak capacity of 151 compared to that 135 with the TFA. So we're able to use DFA in both mass spec and UV, one modifier, and we're actually getting higher peak capacity. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's just a different additive than TFA or Formic, which most people are accustomed to, but it adds a lot of benefits. And we've simplified our mobile phase by taking out that IPA. Exactly. So Kim, that was fantastic. I think we may have uncovered a new additive that scientists can use. I know. But this DFA compared to TFA and to Formic Acid has some really great advantages in both the UV and MS, one additive. So how do you want to go about answering this question to the scientists? I mean, can we give them options? Sure, I, th I love it when we can give a scientist good news. And yep. I think we showed with this experiment that you can use DFA and use it in the mass spec, use it in the UV, one additive, um, it performs better in the example that we looked at with sure. higher peak capacity. Um, you know, it's fantastic. Yeah, you just need to make sure you're using the right grade, right? You can't be using some garage shop, you know, junky DFA. You want to make sure you're using LCMS grade because right. that's important. But again, if they can get that, pff, I'd try it. All right. So I think we can tell this scientist there is an alternative to that compromise that you have to suffer with. Yeah. Between formic acid for the mass spec and TFA for the UV. They can try DFA, yep. high purity DFA, that's exactly. meant for mass spec analysis to reduce those salts. Perfect. Well, I'll write this up. I'll get it back to the customer. Hopefully, they'll have good luck with it. Yes, let's do it. If you'd like your question to be answered on a future episode, please feel free to email us at trustyourscience at waters.com. <laughs>